First tonight, when Lydia Bastianich was a little girl, she would help her grandmother feed chickens, raise goats, pick figs, and forage for wild asparagus. And those were just a few of her regular chores. They all turned out to be invaluable training for someone who would go on to become an acclaimed chef and restaurant owner and the host of a popular cooking show on public television. Lydia Bastianich grew up in a region of Italy that became part of Yugoslavia after World War II. Her family fled, and after spending time in a refugee camp, eventually settled in New York City, a story she tells in her memoir, My American Dream, A Life of Love, Family, and Food. You got married when you were only 19 years old. Uh, your husband had worked in the restaurant industry. You and he decided to open a small restaurant in Queens, about 40 seats. This was a big leap for you, wasn't it? It certainly was. We hired a chef. And I became his sous chef because I had to learn everything. And for 10 years, I was the sous chef and we worked together and, and uh, business was booming. And we had two restaurants by then, sold those two restaurants in 10 years and ultimately opened for Lydia in Manhattan. And that's where I became the chef in 1981. I said, I'm going to cook the regional full food of Italy. Italy has 20 regions and every region cooks differently, if you will. Felidia was a high-end restaurant. You were in Manhattan, not in Queens anymore, and you were the chef. How difficult was that with the competition that you have in Manhattan, with the critics that you have in Manhattan? How tough was it for you? I was comforted. I knew they were going to love my food because I love my food. And I had a new thing to, to tell them. I had a, the, the regional Italian uh, food. And so I just went in there and I did, and I cooked the polentas, the risottos, all of the gnocchis, all of those things that were not cooked in the Italian-American cuisine. The people kept on coming. They were curious. The food was good, was delicious. Was, and till this day, you know, my philosophy is not uh, uh, of, a, of a food, of a chef, what can I invent? It is actually how can I transport the Italian regional culture, you know, my native culture to my adoptive home. Your parents and you and your brother arrived in this country without speaking English. You had, what, less than $50 yeah. between you. Uh, you had no particular skills. Now you have this restaurant empire, you've had a TV show, you have cookbooks, you're an enormously successful chef and businesswoman. When you think back to the journey of your life, what do you make of it? Well, I know one thing's for, for sure. It could only happen in America. We rolled up our sleeves. I remember of that um, my mother and my father sometimes would question themselves. Did we do the right thing? And my brother and I, you know, we would always listen. And I think that my drive comes uh, from really uh, telling my mother, mother, you did the right thing, you see? We can grow here, we can get educated, we can uh, uh, become, become somebody. And I think that that was my drive. Lydia Bastianich's mother lived to see her daughter's success. You did better than my own mother did. Yep. I did? Yep. So I'm okay? I'll give you a kiss. I'll take that. Oh, All right. right. Thank you. When you wrote the book, Romania. your mother was still alive. Is she still alive She's now? still alive, 98, I just spoke to her. <laughs> Bastianich became famous not just in New York restaurant circles, mm, but across the entire country recipes. when she got her We're own cooking show on public meat. television. All of this, this is not good for a salad, but it's darn good for a risotto. Tutti a tavola mangiare, everybody to the table and let's eat. Being famous Delicious opened Italian doors. Restaurant. It was a thrill when Bastianich, raised a Catholic in Italy, got the opportunity to cook for not one, but two different popes. With Pope Francis, after the meal, he asked if he could have coffee with you and, what, a half dozen it, others? When he came in, uh, he saw us sitting there, and we all jumped up, and he says, posso avere un caffè con voi? Could, could I have a coffee with you? And he was so, so, you know, like, my, my uncle came in or somebody like that and we did, we made, uh, my daughter ran up and made the coffee for him and he spoke to us about 15 minutes to each one and ultimately you know, went in his pockets and got a blessed uh, rosary for each one of us. Pretty cool, cooking for two different popes after having grown up with really nothing, come to this country with a suitcase and right. really nothing more. You can and really see her light up too when she talks about that. Yeah, and she's so successful. And it makes me think that if I were to suddenly inherit a vast sum of money from some great aunt I never knew I'd had, I want to go to Italy. 20, all the, 20 different regions. I'd never stop to think of it. 20 different regions, each with its own distinctive, you know, not completely 
unique but distinctive style of cooking, how much fun would that be? Just eat your way through Italy. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> The first part of our conversation with Lydia Bastiani shared it last night. In it, she talked about how her family lived a farm-to-table life long before anyone had coined the phrase farm-to-table. She also talked about a friend whom she worked with in a bakery when they were teenagers, a friend who grew up to become actor Christopher Walken. If you missed that part of the interview, you can watch it on our New Center main website or our mobile app.